In this six-part series by Brownells, we'll be giving tips on how to accessorize your 1911. First up is the mainspring housing. The mainspring housing is an easily installed part that can be added to your 1911 to alter the feel and look of the pistol, or simply to replace a polymer unit with one made of steel. When coupled with an enlarged magwell, it can also aid in quicker reloads. In this video, we'll take a look at the various offerings you can choose from, and then show you how to remove your old mainspring housing and install a new one. Mainspring housings come in different shapes and texture patterns, and it's up to you to determine what looks and works the best for you. Some shooters prefer a flat housing, while others find the arch style is more comfortable. You can also get them with coarse checkering, fine checkering, straight serrations, or something completely different, like this Ed Brown chain link pattern. Another option worth considering is a built-in magwell. This feature offers a larger opening to aid in fast reloads and is popular with competitive shooters. They can be had in a one or two piece design and installed just the same as a standard housing. The one piece has the advantage of being, well, one piece with nothing to come loose or be lost. The two piece on the other hand, like this Ed Brown, allows the owner to remove the magwell to make the gun more compact for concealed carry. Either style will give a lifetime of dependable service when properly installed. Replacing your mainspring housing is also an easy way to add a lanyard loop to your 1911. These can be had with a recessed or an extended loop to receive the lanyard clip and require no alteration to the gun. This is also a great add-on for anyone who needs the security of a lanyard on the sidearm in an active duty environment where physical circumstances could result in a dropped or dislodged pistol. So, once you've selected a new mainspring housing, we're ready to drop it in. Installing it is fairly easy and requires only a few tools. You'll need a screwdriver or the appropriate hex wrench to remove the grips, a mainspring housing pin tool, and a small punch to disassemble the old mainspring housing. A good bench block is also something you may want to have on hand for this operation. We'll begin by removing the magazine and locking the slide back to ensure the gun is completely unloaded. Next, we need to remove the slide. First, we'll depress the recoil spring plug and rotate the barrel bushing to release the plug. You'll need to be careful here and control the plug as it becomes free Otherwise, it may end up on the other side of the room. Once you have the plug removed and the tension off the recoil spring, you can retract the slide until the small disassembly notch lines up with the retention tab on the slide stop. Then, when it's correctly aligned, you can raise the rear of the slide stop slightly on the left side of the gun while pushing on its protruding pin on the right side. At this point, the slide will come right off the front of the gun and can be set aside. Note that while you can do this job with the slide in place, it's much easier with it removed. Next, while the hammer's back, remove the thumb safety by rotating it to the middle position and pulling it out of the frame. Now put your thumb on the hammer and pull the trigger while depressing the grip safety and carefully guide the hammer to the lowered position. Then we need to remove the grips using the appropriate hex wrench or screwdriver and set them off to the side. Next, we'll lay the pistol on the bench block with its left side facing up and locate the mainspring housing pin at the bottom rear of the frame. You'll see a small depression in the head of the pin. This is where you place your mainspring pin tool or punch. Place the tool in position and push the pin out the other side. Now you can pull the mainspring housing out. If it seems stuck, you can cock the hammer to get the housing started. Once it's out, the grip safety and sear spring can be removed and set aside along with the frame. With everything out of the way, we can set up to transfer the mainspring and related parts to the new housing. To remove the small parts, it's best to secure the old housing in a vise so you can use both hands. Press and hold the mainspring plunger down while you remove the tiny retaining pin with a 1 16th inch punch. Once the retaining pin is clear, you can ease up on the mainspring and release the tension. We'll then take the housing out of the vise and carefully dump out the contents. You should have three parts, the mainspring, the mainspring cap, and the mainspring retainer pin. To install them in the new housing, place the pointed retainer pin in first, followed by the spring, then place the mainspring cap on top. With the new housing in a vise, depress the cap with a puncher similar tool until you can push the small retaining pin in place. Remember, the small head of the pin goes on the inside wall of the housing. Once the retaining pin's in place, your new mainspring housing is ready to be installed. Start putting everything back together by first making sure the hammer is all the way forward. Then lift the hammer strut up and place the sear spring in the rear of the frame with the three legs at the top and the small tab at the bottom. 
That tab must go into the small cutout in the frame for it to seat properly. Hold the sear spring in place while sliding the mainspring housing up into the frame about halfway. Now you can take your finger off the sear spring and put the grip safety into place. At this point, we can slide the mainspring housing all the way up, taking care to see that the tail end of the hammer strut seats into the mainspring cap. You may need to move the frame around to let gravity help with the alignment. When you have everything in place, align the holes in the frame and the housing to receive the pin. If you can't quite get the housing in far enough by hand, you can push it against the workbench until the holes line up, and then insert the pin. It should stop about halfway in. You can knock it the rest of the way with a plastic mallet. Be sure the pin is flush with the frame. Now cock the hammer and make sure the strut was aligned properly. If the hammer won't go back, remove the retaining pin and try again. Once you have the hammer in the cock position, replace the thumb safety. You may need a small tool like a screwdriver to retract the safety plunger and allow the safety to move all the way into position. Once the safety is in place, the gun can be reassembled and function tested to ensure everything is working properly. And that's all there is to it. Be sure to visit brownells.com today to see our full selection of mainspring housings and other 1911 accessories. And remember, everything we sell is backed by our 100% unconditional forever satisfaction guarantee.